It just happened. This cow, this deer. We all have creativity in our lives and creativity within us. It's expressed uh, through painting, through music, dance, sculpture, hiking. It can be expressed in the, re in the relationships we have with the people in our lives. It can be expressed in many different ways. But because life happens, and we've all experienced life happening, Often those creative outlets for us are pushed to the, to the back of, and uh, sometimes decades go by before they're, they're brought out again, dusted off, to become an integral and important part of our lives once again. We continue our conversation with Debbie, who after more than 35 years of a hiatus from having painted before, she picks up her paintbrushes and in her first painting creates an amazing painting. And it can be an inspiration for all of us to maybe dig around in the closets of our lives and, and dust something off that gives us joy in allowing us to express ourselves. Uh, this painting is a painting, as she describes it, an homage to Michelangelo, so of course it's painted on the ceiling, and it is also an homage to the animals she loves. As part of the decoration, I had always wanted to paint a ceiling like I had seen in my art history classes so long ago. I wanted to do a, a mural. Um, and I wanted it to probably be like a flying cow because cows are my life these days. And I got to thinking, well, okay, cow angels and all of the animals that I've loved that have moved on. Um, I thought, well, you know, I could paint like a, a flying cat and a flying dog. and all these silly little angels. And then I got to thinking, well, you know, we're getting pretty silly. Uh, and it was my friend that suggested, well, why don't you do, since you're, since you're painting the ceiling, why don't you do like the Sistine Chapel and do a cow touching something else? And I had just recently lost Jane, our beloved deer. And, <laughs> sorry. And um, I was talking with Raleigh about, well, maybe I should paint Jane and a cow and we came up with the Sistine Chapel idea uh, with the creation of Adam, where God is reaching out, touching Adam. Uh, and it just, it just happened. This cow, this deer. Um, <clears throat> and in the um, creation of Adam, there's all these little cherubs, these scary looking little naked babies. I've never really liked cherubs, but, um, I thought to myself, well, we can make this into something that I'm comfortable with, other animals. And I thought about, well, what, what are all the native animals that you're going to see if you come to visit this cabin? You're going to see a raccoon and a possum and a skunk and a squirrel and all these different things, turkeys. Uh, so all of my cherubs became animals that are native to this area. And uh, it just, it works for me. It's, it's spiritual to me. <laughs> Maybe we'll entitle this segment Scary Naked Baby Cherubs or something. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. Um, you talked earlier that when you were in college as an art history major that you wanted to paint uh, animals and nature, but there was a lot of peer pressure on you to paint things that had a meaning, had a point, had a political statement behind it, and you really didn't want to do it, so you were very frustrated and didn't paint again for 35 plus years. That's right. But now you've, you've taken the ceiling painting, using the Sistine Chapel as a template of sorts, you've decided to paint the animals that mean so much to you. So did that take a bit of courage? I wouldn't say it was courage. Um, uh, let me analyze that a second. Why did I choose to paint animals instead of cherubs? Because the animals speak to me. Uh, animals are comfortable to me. They're comforting. And their love and their, um, uh, they don't judge you. 
uh, they appreciate what you do for them. So to me, they're my little cherubs, they're my little babies, is their, their sweetness. Well, it sounds like you're painting. Yeah. So in a sense, are you, are you, did you do the ceiling painting for you? Yeah, the painting is for me. Uh, I wanted to paint this ceiling because that was my expression uh, and, and my joy. And um, it turned out, I, I didn't know how it was going to turn out. And I'm, I'm pleased with the result. It gives me the warm feeling of love. I see love in that painting. And that was what I wanted to portray. So it was a success. You started out with the idea that you wanted to convey love. And as part of that process, at some point during this, some sort of divine inspiration took hold of you. Yes. And you had the image in your mind of, of the animals and of the, um, the whole feeling that one would get from looking up at the ceiling and seeing, um, like Michelangelo did with the creation of Adam, you see the love that you feel for the animals and that you receive back from the animals in your painting. You know, a lot of people, when they, when they start in the creative process, they might have an idea in there. For you, when you paint, is there a chart in your mind of what you're going to do? Well, um, particularly in this instance where it was up on the ceiling, I had to do a preliminary drawing and get all the perspective worked out because there's no way I could lie on my back this far from the ceiling, which is how I was. Um, we sat up a scaffolding and I'd climb up there on a ladder so and spent really all day. Right. That's the only way to do it. If you tried to look up and paint all day, your neck would just give out. Uh, so yeah, I was lying on my back about 18 inches from the ceiling and I was painting like this. And I was so close that I was doing small amounts at a time and you can't really see, you have to step back from a painting to see what it looks like. So at the end of the day, I would climb down and I'd take my iPad and I'd take photos and then go back to the house at night and I'd sit there and study it and tell myself what I needed to change. I know there's, there's a jackrabbit up there and I can remember the day that I painted the jackrabbit. His eye looked perfect, her, her, I'm sorry, her. All of my animals up here, except to, except for one, um, are female, and that was intentional. But um, when I was painting the jackrabbit, I did this, this beautiful eye, and then I got down on the floor and I took a picture and I went, oh no, the eye was way up here. <laughs> and the other one was down here, like <laughs> Cyclops. So that, you have to get away to see stuff like that. Um, but getting back to the drawing it out, I had to sketch out the cow the deer and all the little animals and how they were going to be and what size they were because I couldn't have a turkey this big and a rabbit this big uh, and I couldn't do those drawings on my back. I had to be further away. So I did draw it all out and take that image and put it on my computer and use a projector and projected it up there and then I, I drew the lines around so I at least had something to start with. And I, I typically when I do a painting, when, when I did paintings before, I would do an outline to start. Now you don't necessarily have to do that if you're doing landscapes or abstract, certainly not. Uh, but if you're doing a human face or some kind of a figure, you want to make sure that you have it right at least the, the right proportions before you just start applying paint or you'll be doing a lot of extra <laughs> fixing <laughs> along the way. Um, so yeah, I did have it planned out where the, the hooves were going to meet and where the animals were all going to fall and I, I studied that, that uh, Creation of Adam painting quite a bit and tried to, to place the little cherub animals in the same places and positions as the cherubs are in Michelangelo's painting. So it's, it's a, a playful, um, uh, it's a playful homage 
to Michelangelo. It's it's not making fun of him in any way, but it is it's a joyful uh, mimic. Well, I would say Michelangelo would love it, except uh, he did turn out to be a cranky old man later in life. <laughs> <laughs>